Hey everyone, welcome to My Wife the Dietitian, a weekly podcast about lifestyle and healthy eating. I'm Rob and together with my wife Sandra, we invite you to join us on this informative yet entertaining journey through the complex world of healthy eating. We'll cover everything but the kitchen sink. Each week we'll discuss topics ranging from how to protect yourself from developing cancer, spicy foods to rev up the libido, to caring for your palliative grandfather with Alzheimer's. We'll also delve into more complex issues like, what the heck is oat milk? Why doesn't my butt fit into these jeans? And every guy's favorite question, will eating spinach really make it bigger? Join us each week as we strive to educate, enlighten, and entertain you. We've all heard grilling meat on a barbecue can increase cancer risk, but we all do it anyways because it tastes so good. Is there a way to use a barbecue in summer to make healthy meals? The type of food you throw on the grill does make a difference when cooking with health in mind. How long it stays on the grill, what you pair with the meat, and how you prepare it before it goes on the barbecue all make a difference to how it affects your health. Join Rob and I for today's discussion on It's Summer Barbecue Season, Grilling, It's Not Just for Burgers. Welcome back to My Wife the Dietitian. Hi, Rob. Hello, Sandra. Hey, it's episode 30. Episode 30. Yeah, it's summer barbecue season. Uh, Grilling, it's not just for the burgers. It's not. So I'm going to be grilling you today. Oh, are you? With some questions. Oh, yes. About, about <laughs> Very grilling. funny. <laughs> uh, some, some barbecue humor, right? <laughs> That's exactly. Some cooking humor. Right on. So we're talking about burgers and steaks and sausages. Mm. And what are the harmful effects of grilling? What are the two substances that are created when the animal meat fat hits the flame? And why are they a concern? And some factors to consider when you're grilling? And how to grill in a healthier way with seven tips. Seven tips. Okay. I didn't realize there was so much to know about barbecuing. Yeah. So um, we are ready for you to inform us then. <laughs> well, oven roasting and baking... Um, typically use lower temperatures so there's fewer harmful chemicals that are produced so that's oh, a it's better the, way to cook but... it's the high heat of the barbecue that's causing issues yeah exactly okay. exactly yeah and it's also the type of food that you're putting on the barbecue oh really yeah i mean there's types that aren't affected by high heat they're formed when amino acids, the building blocks of protein and creatine a natural compound found in muscle meats react at high temperature what happens is uh, two harmful substances are formed, and that's the heterocyclamines, HCAs. I've, you've heard me talk about those before. Uh, I thought you were going to say heterosexual. <laughs> no. Heterocyclamines. Heterocyclamines, okay. <laughs> and then the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and those are the pH. P-A-H's. Yeah. See, there's a word that makes sense to have a short form for. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Because they, oh, so what happens is they cause free radicals during high heat cooking. So do you remember the free radicals we talked about uh, back in like episode Way five? Back. Yeah, yeah. The cancer prevention. Free radicals. Remember the... Remember what? They're what? like the, the something to do with rust on a car. <laughs> exactly. And they go and get rid of the rust or something. Well, the free radicals are created when cells are broken down. And so antioxidants, so plant foods have antioxidants and they block the PAH formation. Can you just say that word? It's more fun listening to you say it. <laughs> Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, antioxidants can block the formation of those and they neutralize the free radicals. Well then. So there's things you can do on the barbecue while you're cooking. Not that, on it, with it. With it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to sit on the barbecue. No, no, that's too hot <laughs> for that kind of thing. That's right. It is very hot. Right. Yeah. And that's the other thing is turn down the heat. So we'll talk about the tips to help uh, to grill in a healthier way. But why are they concerned? Like, why are these uh, substances are, are concerned? The HCAs, the heterocyclamines, and the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Because? Uh, 
cancer probably. Yeah, they increase the risk of colorectal cancer, pancreatic cancer, and prostate cancer. Now, how much do they increase the risk? Well, there's an, um, people that have a high intake of barbecued meats. It's correlated with an increased risk for those cancers. Um, I don't know the numbers of the percentage. Okay. But, but it is... It, it, it is an increased risk. Yeah. And they're actually looking at dietary secondhand smoke, like standing around a barbecue with those, you know, those great smells. Um, if you do that too often, uh, they're looking actually in pregnant women, the babies, the fetus head can have a smaller head size when... Um, because of barbecue smoke? But Yeah. Yeah. Just they're, they're harmful on many different levels. Crazy. How do they study that? That's crazy. <laughs> but interesting. Good to know. I suppose it makes sense that if uh, most smokes that we inhale are going to be harmful, that barbecue smoke is no different. Yeah. And even though even... it smells good, right? When yeah. It's wafting over from your neighbor's house. You're like, ah. But yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. And they actually are looking at, they're testing the ingesting of the liquid smoke, like the flavoring, mesquite and different um, flavoring that you can buy. Oh, And right. seeing if that has an effect on cells, like cell death. And hmm. um, so it's really, it's kind of in the infancy in terms of the research. But yeah, there was some evidence that showed that some of the liquid smoke that you use on food can uh, be more harmful than liquid cigarette smoke on cell death. So yeah, it's it's pretty interesting that, but then there was one conclusion that said that you'd have to drink like three bottles of the flavoring to have, like to actually <laughs> like have yeah. a lot of it. So yeah. it's, uh, yeah, like I said, it's still in the early stages of research with this. You got to read the fine print for some of those studies because sometimes they, 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 t they make a big headline, but really it's not a, a huge risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more about um, what type of food you're putting on the barbecue, what you do with it before it hits the grill and how long you cook it for. Yeah, it makes sense. Those are some real things to think about when you're barbecuing. So um, how to grill in a healthier way? How can we grill in a healthier way, Rob? Uh, I'm just guessing that we don't burn stuff. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Maybe, maybe don't use like... Uh, nasty fat filled meat interesting like health, healthier meat choices right yeah yeah that's right so as, as delicious as a big slab of meat is yeah for exactly. some people and it's actually better to use like a tongs or a spatula instead of a fork because when you pierce the meat then that can you know the juices come out and then the juice hits the flame and it causes the flame to hit the meat and then that chars it and that's the high temperature that's uh, causing those uh, heterocyclamines right and the PAHs too. So yeah, definitely. That's actually on the list, what you said. All right. Um, so yeah. marinate first, actually. And what does that do? I that, mean, other than add flavor. It's actually a barrier it. to keep the flames from touching the meat. And really? it softens it for sure. Yeah, that's how does, a huge thing. How does that thing. work? You use vinegar or citrus juice or herbs or spices. Kiwi is a natural uh, tenderizer. Like kiwi has this uh, enzyme in it, and that's a really good one. Cherries, actually adding a cup of mashed cherries to a pound of ground beef, suppressed can or carcinogen formation by 80%. Do you understand, like, did you read how it actually works? Like, does it seal the meat so it can't get to the stuff that causes carcinogens? Well, I think what happens is when you marinate the meat, it tenderizes it. And then the next thing I wanted to say is you put the meat into, if you can, pre-cook it before it hits the grill. So use the barbecue more as a finishing stage. So if you microwave, for instance, first for two minutes, you're starting the cooking process already and the marinade actually starts to break down the meat too so the marinade's helping and then the microwave and then you put it on the grill just to finish it just to and you, so it's not there long it's not getting charred it's you know it's a very brief time that you're using the barbecue sounds good yeah, right. so that's, uh, yeah, so definitely also other marinades. Um, and if you can do it 10 minutes before cooking, like put the meat in the marinade for, you know, uh, at least 10 minutes before cooking. People sometimes use dark beer, uh, wine, tea. 
Um, and then I mentioned as a, like, as a marinade. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's actually better to make your own like things like that. And like, um, the vinegar or a based or the, the citrus based or herbs and spices like the rubs versus using the, you know, barbecue the, sauce. Yeah. yeah the store bought it's full of sugar and other things. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. And you're in more control of what's, uh, the marinades made out of. Interesting. All mm-hmm. right. So that, so I mentioned, you know, using reduced cooking time. So that's the other one. And that's uh, if you microwave it first and then use the grilling as a finishing stage. Um, The other one is reduce the portion size of meat. And you mentioned that as uh, something that you thought, yeah, I don't have such big portions. So kebabs is a great way to have a meal with meat if you want the meat, because then you're just cutting up like you have the piece of meat and you've cut it into smaller chunks and then you're also adding the vegetables like say the peppers the onions the mushrooms the tomato maybe pineapple and that would be a better way to grill uh versus a, like a whole steak right See, i i always just think of the barbecue as a, a meat cooker and i'm sure i'm not alone I, i'm sure a, a lot of people that's how they use their barbecue for cooking burgers and steaks and maybe a salmon or something, you know, but there's so many other ways you can use it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and the, the, the plus side too, this is going back to our, one of our previous episodes recently, but you're not using oil to cook on a barbecue. Like you're not frying it in oil on a pan, you know, so there's, that's a benefit. Right. Cause it's dripping, but you don't want the um, fat to meet the f- the flame because no then that fat and flame yeah because that sparks up the uh and increases the risk of charring the meat and that's not good exactly but yeah absolutely and with you know combining if you had a kebab for instance then you've got the vegetables or the fruit like pineapple as i mentioned w- combined with the meat and that actually because they have antioxidants and the polyphenols and they are counteracting the damaging effects of the free radicals that I mentioned. Okay. So that and then that blocks the PAH's formation. So that's like a better way to enjoy your your grill. And also if you do have like a you know if you're cooking a burger or cooking a, a steak, then have smaller portions and also making sure like you have a salad or some, you know, um, we're going to mention some of the comparisons of different like potato salad versus coleslaw and a veggie burger versus beef burgers. But, you know, using those vegetables alongside the meat can help with uh, mitigating that free radical damage. Oh, OK. That makes sense. I mean, it's not just about balancing your your meal. It's actually has a a chemical like a chemical impact as well yeah biochemical a positive or, chemical impact yeah interesting on our cells yeah so it's that's one way to do it so um so marinate first and then reduce the portion size of meat as i mentioned uh, number three is lower temperatures so turn the gas down and wait for the charcoal to become low burning embers versus like firing it up on high um so and also uh, gas grills actually are better. Uh, they have lower temperatures and then they produce less smoke because it's the smoke that's harmful too. Mm, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But I guess that's what a lot of people like is that flavor, right? The smoky flavor, but it's not healthy. Exactly. Yeah. That's, as I mentioned, they're looking at uh, the actual f- smoke and how that impacts uh, human cells and if it's causing um, cell damage. Right. The next one is reduce cooking times. And I mentioned that by, uh, you know, if you do pre-cook it a little bit, like in the microwave, for instance, if you can, and then marinating, because then if you marinate, then you might uh, not cook as long. The next thing is flipping often. So instead of like leaving it on there for five minutes and kind of walking away and forgetting um, every minute, uh, flip it, flip it, you know, back and forth, back and forth so that it's not um, in contact with, uh, you know, the heat for as long Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, you know, uh, I think I should mention the metal, you know, those metal brush. Yeah, the cleaners, the yeah, grill cleaners. The grill, yeah, that you clean the grill with. It's really actually, there was like a 
public health statement saying don't use those because there's so, so many people come to emerge with uh, little metal fibers in their esophagus like embedded in their throat from just having those on the grill and then the next time you cook it gets it, like it's stuck on the grill and it, it gets stuck in the meat and then someone eats the meat and then they they pierce their esophagus and that's a real problem so that's Crazy. Uh, yeah it's happening more and more hmm. um they had like you know people in emerge just with you know this uh slivers of barbecue brush yeah yeah, yeah. and also the the metal um you know the what are they called in, when you're in the sink with the metal steel wool kind steel of steel wool thank you that's yeah. what I was talking about. And then, yeah, using a silicone is probably a better material to use for cleaning your uh, the grill and cleaning dishes and stuff instead yeah. of metal. That's a good tip. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next one is cut off the fat. Um, if you are having like a, a steak that has like the visible marbling around the uh, around it. So if you cut that off, then you'll have less of the dripping fat and juices that make the flame. Right, right. So that uh, that That's would fat help. fat burns. Yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you get rid of that. You, yeah, you're not going to have the big blasting flame on your barbecue searing your meat. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Making it black. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. You should cut off the black part if you do have meat that's um, that's been charred. Either yeah, throw it away or cut that part off. Or it's Cajun. <laughs> well, sure, but that's probably not a good thing unless you're having lots of vegetables with it. And that's the last tip is include vegetables and fruits for the flavonoids and the antioxidants and the polyphenols. Uh, so berries and cherries and red grapes, apples, citrus fruits, the cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and kale. So if you pair those with your meal, like any of those things, they have really high levels of the polyphenols and they can help um, when you're eating your barbecued meat to mitigate some of that free radical damage that you might be having happen with um when you're grilling interesting mm -hmm. yeah so i mean you should have a balanced meal anyway but that's even more reason to have some vegetables when you're when you're having your barbecued meat yeah and like broccoli for instance boosts the liver for de the detoxifying process so you eat the the broccoli and that helps the liver do its job better so it's all like you know our body's such an amazing, uh, it's got a so machine. many, yeah, it's got yes. so many processes going on and yeah. Do you want to hear some comparisons in terms of, um, veggie burgers versus beef burger? I can't wait. <laughs> Funny. Sometimes you just want a beef burger, right? If you're not a vegetarian. Um, uh, but, uh, just looking at some of the examples, like if you have a veggie burger, Compared to a beef burger, it's got about half the amount of calories, a third of the amount of fat, and it does have way more sodium typically, though, the veggie burgers. Yeah, because it's more processed probably than a hamburger. It's... Yeah, but it's made with like a soy protein or possibly chickpeas. That's the thing, too, is you can make your own uh, vegetarian burgers now. Like there's just um, so many different recipes out there and so many options for black bean burgers or lentil, you know, like there's just mm -hmm. pea protein. Like there's so many different types of uh, vegetarian burgers. Yeah. I don't find they work as well on the on the grill anyway. Um I don't they, think we don't, have too much, like we haven't done uh, homemade ones as much as... No, I, I just should. imagine them being maybe crumbly, but I'm sure there's ways to do it so they're not crumbly. Totally. Or yeah. use, did you read anything about using tinfoil? Mm. Is there any uh, potential bad effects of having cooking in tinfoil? Aluminum foil. It's good. I think it's called now. Right. Because <laughs> anyway, tinfoil. That's from like when I grew up in the seventies. <laughs> what it was called, right? I think it's well. You know, it would be helpful because it's not uh, the fat isn't touching the grill to make the flame, and it's not touching the food. So. Right. I'm just thinking if the aluminum's getting heated and there's some kind of effect of that rubbing against your food, but. Well, I think I think Just it's curious. actually healthier to use those berry because it's a bit of a barrier for sure. the flame. And there's other ones too now that you can get like silicone and different types that you can put on your grill. Right. Okay. So they're okay then. Yeah, it'd be good. good, um, good. 
I mean, the one benefit to the grill is it does, like you said, inst- versus frying where you're keeping the fat in with the food, it drips down and it, you know, you're getting rid of that, um, the extra fats, the saturated fats. True. I'm just thinking of uh, one of my favorite meals in Mexico that we used to get, Papa's, Papa's Rianus, it's called. It's like potatoes. It's all wrapped in tin foil. It's like chopped up little potatoes, um, corn, slices of like the awesome beef that they have down there. And it's peppers, almost like, like red pe- or uh, green peppers and jalapenos. It's kind of like Mexican poutine almost, mm. but way better and like way more high end than normal poutine because it's not French fries. It's like real food mm-hmm. and there's like cheese on it and some sort of sauce and they wrap it all in tin foil and put it on the barbecue and everything's all like mushed in together and it's so good. Oh yeah. Like that's, I would take that over a burger any day. Yeah. Yeah, so good. So good. Yeah. yeah. And it's loaded with veggies. Oh, yeah. It's Remember that? Super loaded. Yeah, super, uh, like, that's like, you know, leftover type of, it's such a huge portion. And you can have leftovers the next day because yeah. it was just, uh, and it's so kind, delicious. It'd be kind of a cool thing to prepare, too, because you just throw a bunch of stuff in a bowl, mix it all up, put it in tin foil, wrap it, stick it on your barbecue, and heat it. And then there's dinner. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably actually, a, well, that's a great tip uh, for a, a meal to cook on the barbecue that's not necessarily a slab of meat. Exactly. And you'd probably want like a Corona or a a margarita with it. That (laughs) makes it taste more authentic. And a a splash of like a lime, right? Just uh, squeeze a lime on there. Maybe a bit of tequila. A little bit of cilantro on the side. Absolutely. Oh, man. (laughs) Um, Okay, the next thing, potato salad versus coleslaw. What do you think is going to be a little bit better uh, health profile? I used to think like potato salad was like because it was potato and it was salad. Yeah. Oh, this must be healthy. But it's nothing more than just like a bucket load of mayonnaise <laughs> with some chopped up potatoes in it and maybe some like onion and stuff. So I know now that that macaroni salad, they're not that healthy. Coleslaw is not much better, but at least it's got cabbage and some Oh yeah, no, especially it. if it's if it's homemade, you got the cruciferous vegetable with the cabbage, and it's got way less calories, like eighty seven calories versus potato salad has like a serving has like three hundred and seventy eight calories, fat um, ca- coleslaw is like three point three uh, grams, and potato salad is like twenty two grams, and the sodium is like off the charts with a potato salad. It's almost fifteen hundred or a hundred and fifty. Sorry, a thousand five hundred. It'd be interesting to compare the two without sauce on them to see, like, to look at their nutrient values then, because I think a lot of the bad rap that potato salad gets is from the bucket of mayonnaise. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's true. And it does it increases the fat with the egg and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah that's it, true. It doesn't need that much. Like, it's always got way too much. Yeah. You, know, you almost well, need to you hose it off. Own, and, right? And make it even with a vinaigrette. Yeah, like it's a little I, bit different, but I've made it with some different things. Just if we have potatoes and I just throw some stuff together, you know how I cook, pickles, right? Yeah. Uh, pickles. <laughs> Sandra gave me a hard time one time because I put pickles in our potato or macaroni I salad. It. That's how I grew up with it. I, I loved it. It was my favorite ingredient. And she's like, there's, we, we took it to a friend's, <laughs> we took it to a friend's like potluck dinner and, and Sandra's like, oh, Rob made the macaroni salad, but there's pickles in it. I'm like, what do you mean? They're, <laughs> but, that's, uh, there's, of course, there's no, pickles in it. That's good. It was delicious. It was a, it's like the star attraction. Yeah, yeah, that's a story that's been recycled a lot because it was really funny. But uh, no, actually, and I really appreciate that you made the the meal for oh, the yeah, product that, too. That was awesome. My butt, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Okay, one last thing. Okay, salsa versus guacamole. Um, in terms of like calories, fat, um, just overall kind of. I mean, they're both delicious. Which one's like more healthy, really? Well, probably salsa. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But once again, that's because guacamole often has like something like fat added to it that mm-hmm. makes it unhealthy. Mm-hmm, right. So you can make it without adding a, a big, huge bucket of sour cream yeah, or you however make they make it. I do, yeah, yeah. And I make it healthy. Yeah. I actually make it with salsa. Tell us how. I Well, I, I mush up my avocados. Uh huh. And then I usually will add salsa because yeah. oh. then you get the onion and the pepper and the tomato mm. and it makes it a little more wet I guess yeah creamy um garlic mm. garlic is key yes lime yeah or lemon or both 
cilantro if there's some around. Mm. Little bits of um, green onion or what is that? Uh, those things. Garlic scapes. Garlic scapes are mm, so good because yeah. they look like a green onion, but they, they're garlic, and you can cut them up real small, and they're like just nice little extra little nibbly bits in there. <laughs> And yeah, so I don't throw a ton of sour cream or mayonnaise or anything like that in there. You don't really need it if you have other things that are making oh, it. Oh, it's your guacamole is delicious. Oh, There's something yeah. else I put in it too. I can't remember what it was. Garlic salt or uh, any spices? Mm, depends. Like I said, the salsa is so good because it's got all that stuff in it. It's got so much flavor in it that just adding that, that's why we use it for our eggs all the time too, because it's its easy to cook it in Yes, and it adds so much so many other ingredients with flavor and, and tanginess and spiciness that oh you're right it's yeah. kind of an ultimate go-to it really is it's way better than a lot of the prepared like barbecue sauces and other types of like dips and you know like the overly processed ones like the salsas are really uh it's a yeah that's true it's pretty versatile and versatile is a good word yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um i probably use it with things more than just on its own Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. more often with yeah. things yeah yeah oh so should we just uh, wrap up i just want to go over um the how to grill in a healthier way the, the tips again just so that people can have that take-home message of um maybe tonight on the barbecue if they are using grilling as their cooking method uh try to marinate first like 10 minutes before cooking right with maybe a homemade marinade and maybe use tongs or a spatula, not a fork when you're cooking. Uh, reduce portion size of the meat. So maybe kebabs would be a better option than, um, you know, big slab of meat. I did forget one thing uh, to limit the processed meats, like the hot dogs, the sausages, like the overly processed, nitrated, full of sodium, full of fat meats. You know, the yeah, bacon. Yeah, that's like rule number one. Just yeah. make better food choices with what you're barbecuing. Yeah. 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 So the, those, those even, you know, barbecuing or not barbecuing, they're, they're not great to include often. Or um, if you're going to use them, I mean, like, like Sandra said, include it in a kebab instead of having a whole giant sausage, cut it up and include it as part of something else. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If you're looking at cooking with health in mind. Yes. There so you it's go. not always about health, but it, it, like if you can do that more often, that's, that's good. Um, so number three is lower temperatures. So turn the gas down or wait for the charcoal to become low burning embers or gas grills have a lower temperature and less smoke. Uh, reduce the cooking time. So try to just use the barbecue as a finishing stage if you can. Uh, flip the meat or whatever you're cooking often. So every minute versus uh, leaving it on there for five or seven minutes. Uh, cut off the fat off the meat. So because it's less of the dripping fat and juices that make the flame. Right. And the last big one is include the vegetables and fruits to get those f- important antioxidants and flavonoids and polyphenols that are uh, protective and healthful and uh, counteract the free radicals that are um, happening with the barbecuing. So yeah, either include them as a side dish or actually on the grill. Yeah. Wrap some up in some tin foil and cook them too. Cause they taste amazing when they're all marinade he- heated too. up. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Uh, corn is another one too. That's really tasty on a barbecue. Right. It's a, yes. It gets a little bit of a different texture. So that's kind of, kind of yeah. fun too. So yeah, lots of different ideas. So uh, hopefully everyone can uh, um, take these tips and enjoy their barbecue in a different way and a healthier way. And uh, yeah, awesome. One, one more thing to add to your arsenal of healthy cooking. Yeah, absolutely. And summer is our favorite time. So um, enjoy that. Uh, enjoy the barbecue season in a healthier way. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. We'll uh, see everyone. Well, we won't see you, but we will. Uh, <laughs> We will talk to you all next week. <laughs> okay. Have thanks, a good Rob. Week. All right. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us today on My Wife the Dietitian. If you like what you heard, don't be shy. Leave us a comment or review and be sure to share our podcast with your friends. If you'd like to hear more, hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on our social media pages for updates, episode trailers, and other odds and ends. 
For more info and links on what we discussed on today's episode, check the show notes. We'll be back next week with another informative and fun-filled episode. Thank you.